Happy Monday, guys. It is your girl, Ms. Drew, your hostess with the Moses. And of course, it is Motivational Monday. Now, today we have a very, very, very special guest. He is a Ghanaian gospel artist. Now, if you don't know, he is, I mean, my celebrity. He has mounted so many stages in Ghana and international. And he's the first, first actual Ghanaian to win a VGMA for the winner in 2017 for his genre. If you don't already know, did you guess it is the one and only Joe Metal? There's Drew. <laughs> hey Joe, how are Hi, you? Joe. I'm good, you? I'm blessed, thank you. Bless thank God. you so much. So today, I mean, it's Motivational Monday, okay? okay? And we're doing, I mean, I know you've done probably thousands of interviews, people talking about your life and all that thousands. stuff, but we're doing things wow. different. Yeah, because you like international. You know uh, that. You are. You are. So I'm please, learning from you. Don't we pretend. <laughs> so, Joe, it is Motivational Monday here. And so today we want to just know about you, like mm. on a deeper level. You know, some of the things that a lot of people don't know. There's quite a few people that are watching that, you know, they are, you're an inspiration to them. You are. Just your life, your story, what you do. You inspire so many people. Well, and we want to know about your story because we know that it didn't start off with all glitz, gold and glamour. So we want to know how it all began. My story, my yes. story. Um, how do I start? My full name is Joseph Oscar Mattel. I'm a guy. I hail from the Accra area, specifically a place called Asre. 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 So it's actually, people say Asre. So it's actually in the Jamestown area. Okay, I know Jamestown. And uh, the eldest of six, I'm actually the only child between my mother and my father. Oh, wow. But I have other siblings on both sides. But you're the oldest. I'm the oldest. First child and syndrome, yes. I understand. And um, so I have two other brothers and three sisters. Okay. Normally, people want, somebody asks me once, oh, you have sisters? We've never seen any of them. True. Uh, but I always say that it's like their life is this. I can drag them into mine um if they don't want to be in it mm. especially and so um what else i did uh how what, what can i say again we want to know about life before joe metal hit this. life before joe metal yes life before joe metal life like as I said, just as joseph life as joseph <laughs> <laughs> so it was more like growing up in the in the cross central area um having to having to struggle through the what we call life you know having to see the real life i mean at a point i was like i can't grow up in this life like things were too hard things were too tough things where you had to fight your way through everything you mm -hmm. had to um work through everything and i know people will say oh but we also work through everything but yeah. trust me when there are no resources because a lot of people would say hard is relative. Yeah. I could say, oh, it was hard because I had to do, you know, you know one job. True. And you true. could be, it's hard because maybe there was no job. So that elaborate was, a little bit The point is there was more. no job. And if there was any job, you were not really getting much for it. Mm. Actually, you, you were not, in fact, sometimes you can't even do anything with what you've been given. I mean, so at a point in time, I was like, you know what, let me just do my own things. Um, uh, but I had to work with my mom. I worked with my mom for a couple of years. My mom was also the same person, struggling through life. Anything my mom sold, I was the supporter because I was the eldest. What so were my, you selling? So my mom sold leaves wow. for food, you mm -hmm. know, like how. So before they introduced the rubber and the packs and everything. So the leaves will come from Takara. They, they, they bundled them and I will... I would go out there selling them to the food vendors wow. and so I had to do that each time before I went to school because we we run the whole uh, morning and afternoon shift mm -hmm. so when I had to go to school in the morning I go very early in the morning to make sure that I supply to my clients sometimes if I have to go to maybe an afternoon shift it's easier but when morning shift some of the clients won't come early wow. so by the time you come in the afternoon to supply them somebody have crossed you Oh. And on and on and on. At, after a while, when the packs and everything was introduced, I couldn't do that business anymore. And then my mom started selling food. So my mom was doing wache, rice, that too. She would cook. And then I would come to the roadside to dish it out to the people. Wow. Yeah, so, but, and so I did business with my mom for a couple of years. So I did that for a while. That too went sour. And then I started doing like 
brooms and canes and oh, wow. when the, the lights were out, I'll do kerosene a little bit, you know, all those those you things. So I've I've things. done I've done all that till I was like at a point I was like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. Because mm. I was as a worship leader. <laughs> so, what you were worship leader whilst yeah, doing all yeah, of this yeah, stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, I was leading. So what is it that even made you want to even continue? Because you must have been like, God, are you even real if you're allowing I me mean, to do all of this stuff? Funny enough, I never, I never questioned God. Good. I never questioned God. Um, especially, you know, when, when you've seen him bring you out of different things, there were steps in our lives where before then certain things wasn't possible and God made it possible. Sometimes in the eyes of people, it wasn't that significant because mm. like the, the leap wasn't that much, yeah. but it was enough for me. I couldn't probably maybe afford a meal a day. Now I can get a meal a day. It's enough. Even if I can get two yeah, yeah. a day, a meal yeah. was a testimony to me until it was two a day. Mm. And that, so you might think it was just a meal, but you have no so idea how hungry I've been before. So a meal was a testimony. Yeah. And that was enough for me until the next testimony. Mm. And that was how I lived my life. Oh, I love so that. I learned to appreciate each breakthrough each increase God brought to my life and I never ever questioned God yeah I never questioned God if there was anything I go back to God and say if I can get more I will appreciate oh, I love but that. not that why me why mm -hmm. ah, why not mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so each step each breakthrough was a testimony yeah. for me and so after a while when all the other things were not working the way it was supposed to I still trusted God for another breakthrough yeah and so that was when I left my mom and okay. you know working with that food because i was like mom it's embarrassing man church members pass by and sometimes they're like um is that not and especially these young girls oh my god oh no you're a guy so it was it was embarrassing like <laughs> yeah it, what age were you at this point i probably was about 17. oh wow 16, 17, wow yes. really 20. so it was it was ah, it was it was some way okay and they're like he's the one he's not the one he's the one he's not and it was i was like no i can't do this anymore so i stopped and then I went to do phone card business. So okay. I started dealing with Oh, I remember with. phone cards. Oh, my god. So goodness. we're doing phone cards, credit. So there was this company we worked with. I remember very well. It was called Teletalk at that time. <laughs> and so we, we take them. We supply it to the vendors the same way. Um, I did that for, too for a couple of years till I was like, you know what? I want to go back to school. Okay. Yeah. So then you ended up like studying and doing all that stuff. I went back. You know. So when was the crossover from then into? So you said you were doing music ministry at the same time. I was. I was, I was basically singing in church. That's okay. It. Yeah. So then, when was the point where you decided actually no, I don't even need to do this or I don't want to do this and I want to do ministry singing full time. That was later because what happened was I went back to school. Okay. I actually went back to school. So my first. Um, I was doing, um, I was doing draftsmanship, so I did draftsmanship for a couple of years. So I was building drawings and all those things and, but at a point to the hardship stepped in with the school, fees paying was a problem. Um, so I had to drop out at the final point. So that was when I went to work with someone doing the draftsmanship and that's what at a point it became some way. So this is what happened at a point in time I met. Uh, the Apostle uh, Leanne Kofi okay. that time. I went to minister in her church and she was not even there when I ministered. So it was actually after the service, they were playing back. She was like, who's that? And then so, 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 so this young guy who came and then she asked to meet her. So I went to meet her at her office and she had a conversation with me about, you know, some of the things God had revealed to her about me and, you know, the things God was going to do with me. And all those things and then but she said what about school and I said um, I'm not schooling anymore I'm working too she was like no you have to go I'm back finished. to school I said but I can't afford it she said no go back so she made me go back to school Wow started paying my fees for me and all those things um, and so that was how I went back to school, started studying again. That one's why I didn't finish. Oh. I dropped out at a point. This time it wasn't about money, but I think at a point it was... It was Fashion changed. You know. And then I, I, around that season was when I joined Soul Witness. Okay. So, but before then, I, I was sometimes 
going to help Daninete, the late minister Daninete, okay, okay. Um, a little bit. I worked with Cindy Thompson along the line a little bit. Yeah, so it was I, like everything was going on without me knowing even the direction God was taking me. But I knew that he had a plan and a purpose for me. And so after I left the draftsmanship, I was working, doing music here and there. But I knew in my heart that where God was taking me, I still needed to pursue a higher education. So what was it that kept you going? Because you knew exactly where it is that you wanted to go. But life was throwing all mm. of these different things at you. You were still having to, you know, basically get hand to mouth, make a means to an end. What is it that kept you going to not even give up? I think it was the promise. I had seen what God wanted me to do and what he was going to do with me. Mm. I, I, I was blessed to know the promise of God for my life at that, an early stage. Oh, wow. What I didn't know was how it was going to happen and yeah. how it was, like, I, I didn't know, but it made me understand the scripture that says all things work together for the good of them that mm. love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I was telling someone that is one of my favorite scriptures for that purpose because I saw so much in my life. Yeah. You know, each version and seizing of my life added up to prep me to become the man that God has made me today. And so it was everything, like your hands and everything, trying to hold on to this. So at a point when I dropped out, I was like, I went for a while. I said, you know what? I want to go back to uni. Oh, wow. And I didn't know how that was going to happen. I didn't have anything to show for. I had NVTI certificate. NVTI certificate was in Fanko University. <laughs> so what I did was I had to go back to do remedial. So I went to His Majesty registered myself to do remedial. So I wrote some of the courses. I was like, you know what? Ministry was still going because I had to use that to pay. Yeah. So I had to split it in two years. Did a first batch the first year, did a second batch the second year. Mm -hmm. And then I applied to Pentecost University um, okay. to do um, um, marketing. So that was yeah, how I went to Pentecost into University marketing. Okay. to do marketing. So even the marketing now, this is, you know where the promise has told you you're going mm. to go. But now you found yourself in marketing, which doesn't even go at, in any way so or how did you how did you envision so it? the decision to do marketing was actually me saying i wanted a professional program to do but at the same time i wanted something that would be relevant to my call yeah, okay okay and so i chose marketing based on that because i realized architecture needed me to be grounded and seated like each time drawing and mm. I, and i had to move yeah. in fact even the uni to grace <laughs> to finish because I mean anyone who is watching who knew my uni days it was hard for me wow. there was a time I went to my HOD and I said I want to defer I begged her oh I said I want gosh. to defer she said <laughs> one thing she told me was she said you know what you're not going to become any smaller but each time God is going to lift you yeah. if you defer now you won't be able to come back yes so it says no matter how hard this is Keep going. finish it Keep going. Keep going. So sometimes I'll come back from administration, sitting in class, and I'm looking. I can't see a thing. Like, I'm so sleepy. Yeah, I'm tired. I'm so tired. I'm looking and I'm writing. And oh. I mean, I had, I had like a covenant brother who was a lecturer there, and sometimes he, they would come to say, where is that your brother? <laughs> There's a, a class going on, and he's not there. And, and, and I remember, like, I remember, like, yesterday, you know, it was hard for me. First year. French. <laughs> hey, oh, French. Everybody stresses with French. Even the, the me. thing is, you know, it's a different thing. You don't understand the language well. <laughs> so let's say you read, but you don't get it well. Yeah. In my case, I couldn't even read it to understand it. Oh, no. So the first semester, oh, straight F. I got oh. F. <laughs> Second semester, I got F. Wow. But I was supposed to do French for two years. And so I, I was like, what am I going to do? So I studied French like it was math. I identify syllables, put them together, and that was how I was able to write during the second year. Mm. So the second year, I got B in both first hey. and second semester. I didn't even know how, but I was doing it like calculation. <laughs> so when I see A and B, I know that this is a conjugation. This is going to give me this word. Yeah. It would mean this. So my idea and focus was not necessarily to get it or understand it. It was just to calculate it and get yes. it. Because the point is, I didn't do French in my earlier education, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't know how I was going to. So Education was hard for me during that time, but listen, I was, I was not ready to give up on it. Yeah. I was like, where God is taking you, there's a lot you need to understand. I needed to be able to understand a few things yeah. to be able to get to, get to that to point because, you know, I needed it. So I, 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 I was willing to, to make it work. It was good because it seems like every single 
hurdle you kind mm. of faced helped you to get closer it to did. where you are it now. Did. And did. so then you became Joe Metal, or you always were Joe Metal, but you were now basking in the glory. Amen. Okay? And then there are other struggles come. Mm. I mean, wherever you go, new levels mean new devils. So now you've gone to a whole new level, mm. you're Joe Metal. What are the struggles that you had been in the industry now? I mean, from the beginning, I struggle with acceptance. Mm. I mean, I struggle with acceptance even with people around me. Um, some people believed you were not good enough. Um, you didn't sound good enough. And then also the ones that also thought you didn't know what you were doing because, you know, the direction you're going won't bring you anywhere or won't take you anywhere. Yeah. This is the wheel. Why are you trying to reinvent it? Just follow the wheel. And, but I was like, I also believe what God had told me. And so I wasn't willing to stop the usual struggles, which would be finance. I mean, it was hard from the beginning, hard. So the little you make, you put it back in. But I think one of the things that also helped me was the fact that I'd always learned how to depend on God. Which is good. Always from the beginning. That's good. So when people neglected me, I knew the way back to him. Mm. So each time I was rejected, I went back to him. That's Not that good. I wasn't, I mean, people, people, people did stuff. People would stab you in the, oh, you go somewhere and the things you hear about yourself, you run away. But each time that happened, I learned, because I knew my way back to him, yeah. I just go back. And sometimes God will say, but why are you even bothering yourself? Because I called you in the first place mm. and I'm the one that is able to establish you. Yeah. you know? And so it, it helped me to learn total reliance on him. That's good. And it became a thing for me. Yeah. And so right from the beginning, sometimes till date, people sometimes say, how do you do it? How are you able to do this? How? And sometimes when you say it's the grace of God, it's a, it's a cliche. You I'm know, like, it's but not. It's legit. But Truthfully, that's what it's been. Because mm -hmm. most of the things that I do, I'm not able to explain. Yeah. I'm not able to explain. And I always tell people, if you can explain the steps it took you to get to where you are, then there hasn't been any work of grace. Ooh. Because grace in itself is unexplainable. Yeah. Grace and the favor of God. Mm -hmm. it's, it's worked for me in, 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 in Luke, I think, 252. It says, Jesus grew in wisdom, mm -hmm. in stature in favor with God and with men. And so I chanced on that scripture and I realized that, listen, apart from the favor of God, God can actually also cause you to have favor with men. Mm. And so I pray to God. This week, I've been sharing that thing with a lot of people about how important it is to have favor with men. It is. Sometimes it is. you know how, it says, when, when men favor you, when, when you receive favor from men because of the favor of God, they do things for you. They, they, they ask nothing in return. Yeah. They, that's they, a blessing. And sometimes they even, I've had people favor me. And sometimes I'm even chasing them to say thank you. They don't want to hear from me. Oh. That's what the favor of God is. And so those are the things that has been a blessing to my life. It's like, listen, God used you to bless me. Mm -hmm. And I just I feel in my spirit to do this. Yeah. And most of the time you think it's because of what you, no, you didn't do anything for them. It is God who laid you on their hearts to it. bless you. That's amazing. I mean, Joe, we could sit here for ages. Mm, I'm here and there's we're friends, so we talk all the time. But there are people that are watching that, again, like I said, they're inspired just mm. by just your journey. And they probably have gotten to the point where they do feel like giving up or they mm. just feel like, oh my goodness, just when they thought they were having a bit of a breather, then bam, another thing has come to knock them off. So what would you say as a motivational word that you would give to these people watching? Oh, all I want to say is don't give up. If you want an example, I'm one. If I am one that nobody expected, nobody had any um, expectation of making it, nobody had any um, good expectation, I would say, for me to come to the point that God has brought me. But one of the things too that I held on to was his promise. I don't know what promise God has given you. I don't know what vision he's put in your spirit and in your heart. But if he put it there, he's able to bring you to the point that he gave the vision to. Mm. And so one of, what I want to tell you is things would happen. You see, if somebody tells you that things will not be hard, it's a lie. The hardships will come. The difficulty will come. The rejections will come, but hold on to the promise. Mm. Hold on to the promise of God. 
not only his promise but hold on to the God of the promise yeah and no matter how long it would take keep pushing keep working keep believing and the one who is faithful that has called you and given you that promise will bring you to the point that he's called you to and so listen no matter what anyone has told you it's their opinion let them say what they want to say but the point is whose report would you believe keep holding on to God keep holding on to his promise and at the time that he's destined for you it will come to pass oh even I'm feeling inspired <laughs> I want to cry <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank cannot you say for thank you me. enough. Thank you for me. I mean, we can't have a nice conversation without letting everybody know what you've got coming up or where we can follow you and see the new parts of your journey. Um Joe Metal um on Instagram, Joe Metal on Facebook, as J Metal on Twitter, Joe Metal on YouTube and everywhere else. Um there's so many things that God has laid on our hearts this year. This year amazing amazing things are coming your way obviously few um songs that is going to be a great blessing to your life some great 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 stuff but the most important thing is please follow us uh follow all the online platforms i think recently i joined tiktok i don't know how hey, it works but i'm learning too but so we're going to do some dancing guys. you know hey 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 so <laughs> So just watch out, but the most important thing I also want to say is um, this year be praying with us and this year be praying yourself. Mm. Listen, there's going to be so much that will be happening both for us and the world at large, but it will take those who know their God to be strong and do exploits. And so there's so much coming up. Uh, just watch the space, yes. they say. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thanks, guys. Of course, you already know that was Motivation Monday with the girl, Ms. Drew, your hostess with the mostest. And we're taking it back to Godwin and Edmar at the AM Club. And we'll see you after this.